All right, so <clears throat> today I'm gonna be talking about groin pain, all right? But before I do that, an update on my paper. So um, I'm trying to publish the paper in some place that can help prevent these surgeries. Uh, my SI joint paper, Dr. Sheely and I are publishing it, and I'm trying to get it into some place that, um, that you know, like people, they, they go to physical therapy, they, if it doesn't work, then they go back to the doctor and then they start cutting nerves, fusing the SI joint. Orthopedic surgeons do it, and also pain management uh, doctors fuse that SI joint too, which, you know, I tell my patients, if you get that done, I can't help you if it doesn't go well, you know? But if you come before that happens, then I can um, usually, you know, I have a 100% success rate with it. Um, because the answer, the answer to SI joint dysfunction is always an upslip and an outflare. That's it. That's what causes it. That's a big secret. So um, I developed a protocol, and that's what I, I outline in that um, that paper. Now, as I was saying yesterday, if you follow me on Instagram, it is um, makes me crazy. You know, like tables and graphs and margins and stuff like that. I'm trying to like over the weekend. I spent like an hour and a half. I had my wife try to help me like get this table into my Word document from Excel. It was all screwed up. Couldn't see it, it was too small. So I tried for like another <coughs> hour, it didn't work. And then I had my assistant who is good at Excel, Inet here, and she um, she was able to do it for me, but it took her an hour. So I don't know how anybody does this. Honestly, I don't. This is like research class in school for me. It was like traumatizing for me. Anyways, my desire to get this out to the public is more important than, um, my hate for um, Word in Excel. So anyways, that's that. I'll let you know when, if it's accepted somewhere. But um, <clears throat> anyways, let's talk about groin pain. So I had this patient, okay, about, I would say about six months ago, he originally came to me. And he's better, but I still don't know what was wrong with him. <laughs> so... He, uh, he came to me and he had this like, he had pain, he had a couple things. He had pain here, okay, here, which would be the SI joint, okay? And then he kept saying when he lifts his, his, his leg up, he says it hurts in here, deep in here, okay? Kind of like a little bit more lateral than the adductor longus insertion, about one finger's width, right? Hurt to touch, everything. Palpate it, hurt to touch, right? So I'm like, all right, this guy definitely has an upslip and an outflare, okay? I corrected that, the pain in the SI went away. And then he had this, this pain in the groin. I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. It wasn't too common. Normally like, you know, a tendonitis or something like that, <clears throat> you know, I always say the tendonitis don't just happen if it's in the shoulder. There's always a common imbalance that people have that's causing it. This, honestly, I couldn't, I, I was sitting there, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what is causing it. I can relieve it. I use my treatment method and relieve the pain. But like, I want to make sure that it doesn't come back. So is there, is there something going on at the, the joint level, whatever. So here's what I did. So like I said, tendonitis don't just happen. They are, um, they are a product of, of a, you know, capsular imbalance or a, um, a neuromuscular firing issue or a weakness, you know, muscle imbalances or something like that. So I'm like, all right, this guy, you know, I checked his um, joint capsule. And that can be hard to do, his hip joint capsule. You, I really, you know, I've been doing this 15 years. I can't, you know, definitely say, oh yeah, that guy has a tight posterior capsule or an anterior capsule or whatever, right? But what I did was I, um, I did mobilization with movement. I'm not going to show it because it's not my technique to show, but I used a mobilization belt and hooked myself up to their knee, right? And I distracted and then I started moving around, you know, and, um, and kind of stretching the capsule in all directions, Okay. I didn't know if it was gonna work or not. And, but I gave him, what did I give him? I gave him the lower trunk rotation, piriformis stretch, adduction and abduction for his, his SI, okay? Now, I wanted to clear that, to make sure that like, if you have an, an upslip on that side of the pelvis, like maybe it's causing strain on the groin muscle, right? So as I was working through it, I'm like, you know, maybe it's a hip flexor snapping syndrome, like that I'm not seeing. You know, maybe it's something going on deep, maybe it's, you know, it's catching on the ligament and that, I don't, I couldn't tell what it was. But, so what I did was I like blanketed and treated him for everything and it worked. He came in the other day for another reason, his shoulder or something like that. And he said to me, um, I said, hey, how's your hip? He goes, great, he's doing great. I was like, really? Like, it's crazy. So um, 
I still don't know what was wrong with the guy. I think it was probably a groin strain, but I don't know why it happened. So um, what I did was I treated him, sometimes if you can, you have a hip capsular contracture, okay? So the hip capsule like, you know, starts to get stiff or, or hypomobile, right? It starts to put a lot of strain around the, 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 the muscles around it, okay? Um, that could be, you know, trochanteric bursitis, that could be a tendonitis, that could be whatever. Okay, so I treated that. I did joint mobilizations, and then I did, um, like I said, I did the my SI joint um, treatment to help bring down the anominate and stabilize it. Um, and that took um, that took about I think it came out five weeks. And yeah, he was good. I was shocked. I was like crossing my fingers whether this was going to work. It wasn't something I saw all the time, so it wasn't something I'm like, oh yeah, you'll be better in five weeks. I was literally cross my fingers and my toes that this would work because I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Um, anyways, it worked. So I cleared the SI joint for a groin strain, okay, to make sure that it was level and it wasn't causing strain, okay, on the, the adductors or even the hip flexors or something in there, okay, and then, um, and then mobilized it and loosened up the capsule. And he did the stretches that I had him do, and sure enough, that thing calmed down. So uh, I was excited about that. I was a little shocked, but I was excited about it. Um, so... Like I said, the moral of this and why I'm talking about it is because, you know, like I say, tendonitis do not just happen. They're not like, oh, you know, I got a tendon. No, you have an imbalance, you know? And that's why it's irritated. In the shoulder, most people are like this all day, right? So what happens is if you have a bicipital tendonitis, you start to rub in the, in the groove like this. It's like, it's, it's like starts rubbing in the groove. And then also it's the shoulders are forward and the, the, the shoulder joint is meant to be supported by the mid trap and rhomboids, right? If that gets too overstretched and weak, it puts a ton of strain on the front of the shoulder and the bicep tendon works overtime. So the same thing can happen anywhere in the body. It happens in the ankle, you know, and I always check the capsule and there's always a common imbalance, but this guy did not have any type of common imbalance that I knew of. But anyways, it worked for me. But um, so that's that. I was actually just taking a, um, a walk and thinking about next week. What I want to talk about is, um, is, okay, so I'm writing this paper and I'm trying to, I threw the book out years ago. 10 years ago, I threw the book out out of frustration. Like I don't do anything really by the book, whatever. But um, so if somebody says like people, like I started reading about this SI joint cluster thing. They're teaching kids in school now, right? And this is the way to do it. You, I think there's like six tests and that's how you diagnose, diagnose an SI joint dysfunction. You, if like five or six, five out of six of them are positive, whatever, right? Honestly, I'm looking at this thing and, and I am so confused looking at it. Like if I did those tests, I would misdiagnose SI joint dysfunction. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm sure they're reliable and valid or whatever, which is why they're talking about it. But what, but when it comes to SI joint dysfunction, it's not hard to diagnose, okay? It is not like those sickle torsions and shears with real, which are really finicky or tricky. SI joint dysfunction is very easy to diagnose, usually where they point right to it. So. Uh, anyways, in this, in this paper, I'm outlining how I diagnose it, and I've talked about it here on social media, but how I diagnose it, and then also next week I'm going to talk about, I'll, I'll show you exactly, you know, as I, as I work through it to try to figure out exactly what's causing the SI joint dysfunction. I've talked about it before, but I'll kind of condense it and put it into a video. Uh, but that, the SI joint cluster thing, that's confusing to me. I would never do it that way, but, um, but anyways... If you're getting good results with the SI joint, let me know if you have any questions on it. And I'll let you know when uh, I'll resubmit this paper. They wanted me to change a couple things. And then I'll, I'll resubmit it to this journal and hopefully we can get it published. Um, they said in a 2020 edition, so whatever that means. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll let you know. I'll keep you abreast of what's going on. But let me know if you're doing this SI joint stuff. I always talk about these people have had it for years usually and it's so easy to fix. All right. Um, anyways, peace.